Here we go. So this is our last sermon in our series of overcoming. And, and I, it's been a great series. Uh, all three churches have been going through it together, and, and I've been excited about it. Because it is imperative in our time that we see ourselves as overcomers. That the church lives and acts and wars as overcomers, right? It, it, it's been a hard year, right? And, and the natural, this has been a hard year. As we get ready to go into fall, there's probably not a whole lot of things to look forward to in the natural, right? We've got a, a hot, buck, hot button action coming up. The country is divided. The, the virus is, is a little bit out of control, and, and I don't know what you think about it and, and all that. Again, I don't want to get into politics, matter is that, that, that it has consequences in our daily lives. And whether you're, you're scared of getting sick, or we you know a lot of people that have suffered loss, or, or whether you're just sad because of all the restrictions, the truth of the matter is life is not easy this year. But we, as, as Christians, still must be overcomers. You know, we did a, we did a series uh, several months ago called For the Record, and we looked at, at Philippians uh, 4.13, I can do all things that Christ strengthens me, right? And, and we, all, we, we typically apply that uh, when you want to, like, bench press a Volkswagen, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But if you look at the context of that, then, then it's really about living as overcomers no matter what situation or circumstance we're going through. Here's what it says. It says in Philippians 4, beginning of verse 11, the second part of that verse says, I've learned in whatever state I am to be content, to know how to be abased, and to know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. Ladies and gentlemen, we are overcomers. The church of Jesus Christ, we are overcomers. We will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm fully convinced of this. Because we are the hope of the world. The church is the hope of the world. Jesus has entrusted us with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it, his message his life, his death, his blood, that precious blood that sets us free from sin has been entrusted to us, the church, to preach to our communities. The, the Bible says that this, this glorious treasure, right, the, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the light of the glorious gospel in the face of Christ Jesus has been entrusted to us. It's inside of us, these earthen vessels, these jars of clay, not that we're anything, not, not, that, not, that, not that we're something special, but, but, but that we're accessible and we're holding this great treasure, not to show our glory, but to show His. And I'm convinced that we as a church are going to continue to move, overcoming obstacles, overcoming temptations, overcoming addictions, overcoming sin, overcoming traps of the enemy, over, overcoming the, the politics and the unrest and overcoming everything things so that the gospel that's inside of us can get outside of us world free in the first week guys we this season right the time around the the feast of trumpets and the day of tone season spiritual season where we're reminded that we are overcoming. And one day, when Jesus finally returns, and it could be any minute, one day, when we see the face of the Lord, that the earth and sky will flee from His presence. Jesus Christ is holy. Overcoming obstacles positions personally. Right, so a couple of weeks ago, we talked about us overcoming personally. We said that we overcome us and then but on the other side because the truth is it's only for a little while it's only for stronger than when we went in and and it's all going to fit together and work for glory maybe we're going to learn something maybe we're going to grow a little bit maybe we're just going to find out how 
outside. And last week, the tactics of the enemy, the biggest tactics being uh, being distraction, and, and we overcome those tactics as watchmen on the wall. The, the tactics that it is as Christians guys our personal burdens don't have to be borne personally we can't carry it alone we're not alone. We talked about that. The, the, Jesus said he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. But God also didn't intend us to be alone in this world either. He created us for fellowship. He created humans to fellowship with humans, to work together, to war together, to overcome together, to do all these things together. And I tell you what, this year, one of the tactics of the enemy... Right? One of the tactics is the divide and conquer. Right? Setting people alone and the isolationism. The hashtag, uh, you know, together alone or alone together that people are using. You know, and I'm not saying anything about bad about social distancing, and that's fine if you want to stay 10 feet apart, 12 feet apart, 3 miles apart, whatever. But that doesn't mean that you have to be alone. Right? You, you can, the, the, the phone still works. Right? Carrier pigeons are okay. Smoke signals, that's fine. FaceTime, find a way to connect with somebody else in the body of Christ and bear one another's burdens. Because what we're talking about today is overcoming personally, but it's not a personal victory. It's a group victory for you to overcome personally. The truth, ladies and gentlemen, is that I may be the key for you to overcome something. And you may be the key for me to overcome something. The keys to this victory may lie in, in a partner, in a group, in agreement. Walking in agreement is walking in victory. Our text for today is, is Matthew chapter number 18, verse 19. This is Jesus speaking, just one, one verse today. And Jesus says, again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If you can just agree. And Jesus is talking specifically about prayer, about, about getting in with a spiritual atmosphere. I'm agreeing together with you. Uh, our minds are together. Our spirits are together. Our faith is together. And we're praying together. And because of this agreement, because of this team that we have, we are going to overcome. Now, here's the thing. We talked a few weeks ago about personal overcoming and, and, you know, you can overcome because you're not alone. You're walking with God and, and all of these things. You can, you can do it. You can make it. You can overcome by yourself. But it sure is a lot easier and a lot more fun if you can do it in a group, right? It's like moving furniture. Can you do it by yourself? Sure. But it sure is a lot easier if you have some people with you. Right? So my, my beautiful bride, Candace, right? she is a furniture-moving nut. We got a house with a lot of stairs. And back when I used to go to the office, I would get up, I would go to the office, and I would come home, and you'd find incredibly large pieces of furniture moved, sometimes in between floors. And she just she gets it in her head, and she just does it because you can't do it. She, get, she gets her little moving blankets out. She, you know, move one side at a time and, and, and scoots it. And you come home and it's like, hey, where's the piano? Oh, you know, it's crazy what she's capable of. And you are capable of overcoming by yourself. But it's so much easier if you can get in a group, if you can get in a team, if you can find somebody to partner with you. It's so much easier and a lot more fun. So this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk quickly about overcoming specifically with the power of agreement power of agreement first thing guys is the agreement begins with friendship 
Agreement begins with friendship. This is why it's so important to have good friends. And you can take the good friends any way you want. Good friends, like, hey, you're good friends. Or someone who's good that is also a friend. It's important to have good friends. Right? Somebody always says, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Right? That, that, that's a true statement. As a matter of fact, it's so true that, that, that it's even written in the Word of God. Maybe not in those words, but here's what it says in Proverbs 13, 20. It says, walk with the wise and you'll become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Right? Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. If you, if you want to be wise, you're going to walk with the wise. If you want to suffer harm, then walk with fools. If you're trying to overcome, guys, the truth is you can't be shackled to people that have a losing mentality. Now, when I, when I was youth pastor, we talked a lot about, you know, picking your friends and, and staying in the right group. The truth of the matter is that just because we get a little bit more mature doesn't mean that we don't need to, to use the same discernment. Right, 13-year-olds are perfectly capable of making decisions, right? And, and sometimes they just got to be reminded to make a good one, right? 30-year-olds are perfectly capable of making decisions. Sometimes they just got to be reminded to make good ones, right? 100-year-olds are perfectly good of, uh, perfectly capable of making decisions. They just need to be reminded to make good decisions. So here I'm telling you, make good decisions when it comes to your friends because agreement starts with friendship. And if you have the wrong kind of friends, you're still going to have agreement. It's just not going to be the right kind of agreement. Right? If you're looking for, for, to overcome, don't link yourself with someone that has a losing mentality. Right? If you're looking for financial blessing and to be free, don't link yourself to someone that has a poverty mentality. And by the way, poverty mentality doesn't have to do with the amount of money you got in the bank. I know people that have some money in the bank that have a poverty mentality. I know a lot of people that have zero money in the bank, but they're not living in a poverty mentality, right? They're, they're maybe scraping by in their checkbook, but they're generously giving. They're living life to the full. They're full of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and, and they're overflowing with life. They're waiting their turn. Maybe they're not walking in their financial blessing yet, but they're waiting their turn. They don't have a poverty mentality. Right? If you're looking to, to overcome an addiction, then don't link yourself with someone that's got a slavery mentality. Right? If you're looking uh, to, to overcome your past, don't link yourself with someone that's got a victim mentality. Right? Find some friends. Find some good friends and, and link yourself with those people. Don't be shackled to people that are going to keep you back, that are going to hold you down. If you're trying to overcome, you also don't need someone that's just going to tickle your ears. You need someone that's going to tell you the truth. you got to walk in agreement, but the first thing before you even get to agreement, you got to walk in friendship. And I'm talking about true friends here, and true friends don't tell you just what you want to hear. They tell you what's true. They'll tell you if your outfit doesn't look right. <laughs> and I want to know before I end up on social media, right? <laughs> they'll tell you the truth. They'll, they'll tell you the truth about relationships. Say, hey, you know what, I, I, know that, I know that you're interested in this person, but, but here's what I see kind of behind the scenes. Because, you know, you can't be led by feelings, you've got to be led by choices, right? Choices, uh, you know, feelings have to follow choices, and if you make the wrong choice. But sometimes people, because human nature, we get it, we get it flip-flopped, and our feelings start leading us, and that leads to usually a train wreck. And so you need a good friend there to say, look, here's what I see is, is happening to you. Here's what I see is happening in your attitude, right? You've got to allow someone to speak truth into your life, and that's what true friends do. Now, everyone needs non-Christian friends, right? I, Alex and Sam, you guys need non-Christian friends because I believe that you're about to influence a lot of those people to, to get saved and walk in holiness. I, yes, we all need non-Christian friends that we can, we can share the gospel with, that we can pull along. That, that otherwise, we're not going to be able to, to let our light shine, right? But we've got to go to war with people that are like-minded, you got to have non-Christian friends so that, that, that we, can, we can witness to them. But when it's time for battle, I want to line up next to somebody 
that's thinking like I'm thinking, someone that, that's praying like I'm praying, and maybe even harder, right? When I line up next to somebody that, that's, that's as strong as I am, or maybe even stronger than I am, that's got as much faith as I have, or maybe even a little more faith, because I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to get stronger, I'm trying to get faster. And so when it comes to those kind of things, when it comes to overcoming, we fight with people. Those people are on our side. We, we join with them and fight against the enemy. But people that God has put in our path. And so we've got to have those kind of friends. Here's the process, right? Here's the process that goes from friendship to agreement. The progression is fi- first, friendship brings fellowship, right? Uh, fellowship is deeper than friendship because it's got a spiritual component, right? It's sharing one another's burdens, right? It, it's, it's living in accountability and encouragement, right? You know, good or bad, this is true. That as your friendship gets deeper, that it goes into fellowship and it's got a, a spiritual component. And this is that you can do this good or bad. As the world, as you get real close to your friends, then there's accountability there also. Hey, you know, I was hanging out at so and so's house last night and we were doing our thing and blah, blah, blah. I noticed you weren't there. Right? It's good or bad. If you choose bad friends, they're going to hold you accountable to live that bad lifestyle. <laughs> If you choose the right kind of friends, they're going to hold you accountable to live the right kind of lifestyle. Hey, I was at church. Where were you? Right? Hey, I went to the, the prayer breakfast and you weren't there. What's up? Right? It, friendship begins with conversations, advances with time, and eventually friendship goes to fellowship. Right? Friendship brings fellowship, then fellowship brings agreement. This is the unity. It's walking in step, and then agreement brings power. Agreement brings power. There's power in numbers, ladies and gentlemen. And I tell you what, in this crazy world, you don't want to do this alone. There's power in numbers. There's strength in numbers. Momentum is a product of mass and velocity. Right? If you want to nerd out on this, you can. Momentum is a product of mass and velocity. The more mass you've got, the more momentum you've got. The harder it is to stop something. Right? You've got more inertia. It's, right, it's why it's harder to stop an 18-wheeler than like a Subaru. Right? You've got more mass. And if you can get some people to come in with you and agree with you, and you're all going the same way, you're friends, but you're more than friends, you're walking in fellowship, kindred spirits, and you're together. And if you're moving forward, then nothing is going to overcome you. Nothing's going to be able to stop you. Right? It's agreement, and we're going to overcome through agreement. Right? Agreement begins with friendship. Ecclesiastes 4 is a great passage of Scripture when it comes to agreement. Right? And also, it, it's, it's so great that we use it a lot in weddings right? because it, it's talking about uh, how great it is to have a team. Right? Here we go, Ecclesiastes 4, beginning in verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help them up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they'll keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Agreement begins with friendship. But then agreement brings help. As in help to me, help to you. Agreement brings help. It says if one falls down, the other can help him up. But pity on anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. Because the truth of the matter is, that as much as we, we strive to live holy, that's one of the visions of the church is to live as, as spotless bride, right? The, the church is to live as, as spotless as we can, as holy as we can. As much as we, we aim for that, we all fall. As much as we aim for perfection in our life, we, we all fall. As long as we're still in this tent, as long as this immortal body surrounds us, then we're all going to come short at some time or other. The truth is that we're all going to fall down a little bit. And we need somebody walking with us in agreement that's going to reach down and help us and pull us up. Someone that's going to pull us up with compassion and strength. It's not going to, it's not going to kick us while we're down and say, well, you really blew it there. Well, thanks. Come down, get on the level and, and pull it up because they're going to remind us that we may have messed up, but we're not failures. We have made, we, maybe we have failed, but we're not failures. That's not our identity. That's not who we are. 
Maybe it was my fault and I made a bad choice. But, okay, I believe in it. You're going to do better. Get up. Get your act together. I'm not going to tell you I'm not going to tell you a lie. You, yeah, you blew it. <laughs> but that's not who you are. That's not move past this. Pull you up with compassion and strength. And maybe it wasn't your fault. Maybe maybe it wasn't at all, but but you know what? Your identity isn't as a victim. Your identity is an is a, is a comer. So come on. Let's get up. I'm going to come down where you are. You fell into a ditch. I'm going to come down. I'm going to pick you up. And we're going to go on together because that's the power of agreement. The overcoming power that you have when you're in a group, when you're on a team. You have someone to encourage you. (laughs) They help you by picking you up and saying, come on, dust yourself off, and now let's go. And they'll hold you accountable for a little while. And, and maybe you're the stronger of the two, right? Because I'm looking, I'm looking through a bunch of people, man. You, you guys know what it, what it's like to walk in step with the Holy Spirit. And so maybe, maybe you're the stronger, and you're the one that has to have compassion on someone that's fallen down. So you pick them up, you encourage them to dust themselves off, and then the next day you call them and see how they're doing. You shoot them a quick text. Hey, h- how is that situation? You did. <laughs> You didn't text her back, did you? <laughs> you didn't go that place we talked about you weren't going to go, right? I mean, you keep them accountable. You encourage them. You push them on. And that's the way that it helps us overcome in the power of agreement. You can do this. Agreement brings help. The agreement brings defense. Agreement brings defense. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says the one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And that's the part that I love, especially in weddings, right? Where we say because we go from a cord of, of two strands to three strands, and we start throwing in the power of God inside of this, right? But the truth of the matter is that there are strength in numbers, and that's true in the natural, and that's true in the spiritual, you want to overcome? You want to overcome deception? So here's the thing. The enemy doesn't have a lot of tricks in his playbook, right? He's got the same things that he's been doing for thousands of generations, right? He's de- trying to deceive people. The lust of the eyes, the lust of flesh, the pride of life. He's always coming at us the same way. It's always the same old tricks. It's always the same old lies. And so when he comes in w- with deception... You got someone else there to tell you the truth. Because some people can get starry eyed. They, they can look at, a, at, at, at something that looks great on the outside, and you need somebody that can take a step back, that's emotionally disengaged, and can say, wait a minute. And you defend yourself against the deception of the enemy. That is a huge tactic in, in our generation. What about depression? This is suffering. People are suffering, especially this year, because they've been disconnected from their groups. And there's not anybody that's coming alongside them to say, wait a minute, you know what? You're really slipping into a dark place. And we've got to defend against this. Right? There's no one else to war in their corner. We've got to overcome, and you overcome as a group, you overcome as a team. You can do it by yourself. But it's way easier and it's so much more fun if you can just get in a group and walk in agreement. You can overcome depression. You can overcome anxiety. When the enemy comes in and starts making you nervous about tomorrow, then you got somebody there, again, emotionally not engaged. They can say, wait a minute. Here's what the Bible says about this. You you know that you you can handle the situation. Here's what the Word of God says. I know you got this. Don't worry about tomorrow, and I, and I know it's going to be okay anyway. And you got someone that can speak truth and reason into it. And last but not least, agreement brings success. Agreement brings success. Two are better than one because they have a good return on their labor. Here's the thing, guys. Can we do this by ourselves? Absolutely. Right? Could, could one of us, could two of us, and go downtown and start preaching the gospel? Yeah, absolutely. But how much bigger would it be if we could all go and find somebody? It's exponential. 
It's huge. Can you, can you overcome by yourself? Sure. But when you join faith to faith, it's exponential. It's bigger than just addition. It's bigger than just multiplication. It's exponential power. It's the power of agreement that cannot be stopped. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do something. Right? This church is going to do something, right? We're, th- this building is going to be full, and it's going to be full of people that have just come out of drug addiction and prostitution and the homosexual scene, and it's going to be full of blacks and whites and Hispanics and Asians, and I believe 100% that this house is going to be full, but I can't do it myself. You can't do it yourself. We're going to do this together, and the more that we add, the more it's going to grow, and the faith that we have that's gonna, that, that, that we felt earlier as we were singing here, that same anointing is going to start shaking making the spiritual walls of this community. I believe that there's a fire and such an anointing that when people are passing by on the roads, they're going to feel something is happening. It's the gospel. It's the light of the glory, the gospel of Jesus Christ flowing through us, and it's going to happen, but it's not going to happen with one or two of us. We're going to join faith to faith, and the same thing happens in your personal life. If you want to be effective, if you want to overcome, if you want to really be victorious, don't try to do it alone. Whether you're getting ready for a job interview uh, or, or whatever, or you're thinking about a business, whatever it is, do it in a group, do it in a team, find some people that are like minded. Ideas grow exponentially. Just like faith grows exponentially, ideas grow exponentially. You ever been sitting around with somebody and you start just bouncing ideas off of each other and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, you're finding courage to step out and do something that you would have never had the courage to do alone. So if you're looking for a business idea, do that. If you're looking for a ministry idea, do that. Find someone that you're walking in agreement with. Start bouncing ideas and it's going to grow exponentially. Faith is going to grow. Anointing is going to grow. The yoke will be broken. Ladies and gentlemen, you can overcome by yourself. You can. But God has created us to be social beings. It's not good for man to be alone. He's created us as social beings, and we it's so much more fun if we've got a group. So find some friends, true friends, good friends. Walk in agreement with them. War for one another. Fight the enemy, tooth and nail, for one another. Let's see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Thank you so much for being here this morning.